This video will equip you with everything you need to get the best possible trip here in Lisbon. We have lived in Lisbon since 2018. It's just an incredible city with so much to see and do. It is not a coincidence that Lisbon is voted Europe's best city break destination. With its warm summers and mild winters, the city is worth visiting all year round. First point in this guide is accommodation. You have to find the perfect location and for us, hotels are the way to go. Sure, you can rent an Airbnb in Alfama, but if you don't love walking up downhill all the time with big suitcases, staying at a five-star luxury hotel like Porto Bay Liberdade is, I mean, it's a solution for us. Some say that paying for a nice hotel room is stupid. After all, you don't spend much time there anyway, right? We wholeheartedly disagree. Looking forward and coming back to a beautiful hotel room after a long day of exploring is what makes a big city getaway special. The pleasure of submerging yourself in a hot bathtub. The beauty of emptying the minibar without feeling guilty. Having a cup of coffee while getting ready for another day of exploring. Or, as we do sometimes, stay in and do absolutely nothing but pamper yourself. Before we get this day started, here are five things you need to know before you go to Lisbon. Obrigada. Never. Here you don't speak Spanish, we speak Portuguese. And obrigada means thank you. Don't say gracias. Bring your camera because this town is beautiful. Bring comfortable shoes because Lisbon can be a very slippery and hilly city, especially when it rains. And forget about bringing your stilettos because they are going to be ruined before you start wearing them here. Even though a lot of places they do take cart, there are also still places that don't. And especially if you're going to some of the markets, you will need these. Lisbon has four seasons, so it can be cold and it can be very warm. Here is a suitable outfit for each season. Winter, spring, summer, autumn. In terms of transportation, we always get around by the scooter or Uber. But there are also bus connections everywhere. You have the tram, you have the tuk-tuks. And then you, of course, also have the metro and the train. And in terms of Uber, we actually use Bolt because it's cheaper, especially with the scooters. So these scooters are by far the easiest way to get around. And we always use Bolt. They're super cheap and they are the most powerful. It's a better one to take. But yeah. be careful in the traffic. Lisbon is known as the city of seven hills. In other words, you'll be walking up and down a lot. So staying in a flat location like our hotel couldn't be better. It's right next to Avenida Liberdad, which is the Champs-Élysées of Lisbon. It's such a beautiful and lush avenue with lots of cute kiosks and beautiful architecture. This is where most of us will be doing more window shopping than actual shopping. But if you love exclusive brands, it's paradise. You are in the middle of everything with walking distance to the best neighborhoods like Principal, Chiado and Castello. With this starting point, Lisbon truly is your oyster. And in this beautiful oyster, here are five of our favorite things to do. Get lost. Walking the streets without any destination in mind really is the most magical way to especially explore a city like Lisbon. To sit at a kiosk and enjoy a beaker while you watch the Lisbon life go by is a magical thing and we love doing that. As we like to call it, football is their religion here. <laughs> Even though we don't really care much for football, it's all about seeing all the people, their passion. Go on a sail trip on Teshu River. It's beautiful and if weather allows it, you can do it all year round. Lisbon is worth traveling to just for the food alone. Love Michelin restaurants? Go to Belcanto, Alma, Seis Maneras or Enico. Lisbon has 10 Michelin restaurants to choose from. Whether you're into Italian, Japanese, French or Lebanese, it's all right at your fingertips. One kitchen you must not avoid is the Portuguese. Portuguese food is insanely delicious and widely underrated. Patiscus, guys. This is the Portuguese answer to tapas. This is one of our favorite things to eat here in Portugal. And when you visit Lisbon, you definitely have to go to a patiscuria or to a place that just serves all these delicious small dishes. 
This is one of our favorite places, and convenient enough, it's located on our hotel, Porto Bay Liberdad. Up and high. Since we walked out of the center of the city, we are ready to talk about five things to avoid in Lisbon. One of them is exclusively staying in the center of Lisbon. It's beautiful there, but there's so much more. With this riverfront location, the neighborhood of Belém is a must visit along with the tastiest pastel de nata you can get. Saldanha, where we used to live, is a completely different and more local but busy vibe. Camp Turic is also one of our favorite neighborhoods, but more on that later. You should also avoid tuk-tuk in our opinion. They're super fun, but actually they have nothing to do with the Portuguese culture and they are a rip-off. You spend so yeah. much money on a very short ride. Whether you like to get high or not, avoid buying your drugs from the street vendors in Lisbon. Is it real? Marijuana, marijuana. Is it real? Yeah. Is it real? <laughs> no, no. Be wary of the restaurants that wave the menu card in your face. Food is generally bad and prices are generally high. Most importantly is to relax while you are here. Take it in your own pace, enjoy yeah. the city slowly. You don't have to hurry to see all the points of interest. Bye ladies, I love you. Don't forget about me. I won't forget about you. Most people come to Lisbon during summer. It's magical no matter what, but consider doing these five things to make it even more special. The most obvious one is to bring a nice bottle of wine and enjoy one of the many parks that you find in the city. It's a cheap way to get drunk and just enjoy the city. Another way is to enjoy many rooftops, because there are so many rooftops in Lisbon. Yeah. Among our favorites are Java, Rio Mavilha. Our hotel Porto Bay Liberdade also has one, so Lisbon really is a rooftop city. Another really interesting thing to do during summer is to take the boat to cross the river of Tejo and then you will sit at a restaurant called Pan Final where you can enjoy an amazing sunset dinner almost in the water. Additionally, you can party uh, in Bairro you can do that year round, but during summer there's a special vibe. Don't wear a lot of valuables because there are pickpocketers, but yeah. enough cash to buy shots. Go to the beach. Lisbon may be a busy city, but you are only 25 minutes away from tranquil beaches. We usually go to Praia Princesa or Praia Imao. It does get cold in Lisbon sometimes during winter, which is why a steam shower is Optimal. We used to say that Lisbon is only a summer city, but in reality there is so much to do also in the winter time. One of our favorite things is to go to the spa for a full day. And our hotel has the most insane spa menu I've ever seen. How about an exotic coconut ritual or a Himalayan detox treatment? Don't feel guilty just because you spend half of the day doing absolutely nothing. Remember, you are here to relax and self-indulge. And even when you single-handedly consume the entire breakfast buffet, there's always a treadmill waiting for you. An excellent thing to do in the winter is to walk all the way from the center along the river all the way out to Belém Tower. We usually walk, but today we're gonna take this one. Because we're a little lazy, you know? You're so lazy! See ya! And this is also a great place to go for a run. When we lived here, I used to run here <laughs> several times a year. This is the Museum of Art, Architecture and Technology. Actually, for me, the best thing about this museum is the architecture here. It's so beautiful and it has this amazing tranquility sitting underneath here during sunset. This is the National Museum of Cars and this is a great place to come during winter. This is an old bus and it took 34 hours from Lisbon to Porto with 23 stops. For a fatty like me, Portuguese soul food during winter is a must. Try the most Portuguese dish, cozido a portuguesa. You can get it at Sensibar every Sunday. Eat bochechas at Taberna dos Ferreiros and Lisbon's best sardines at Floresta Escadinhas. Try literally the world's best dog at Pabe. Another excellent idea is to shop till you drop. There is a very big chance that you will end up here in Chado because this is a place where you go for shopping, have a little coffee in the, in the morning, it's a very, very nice area to visit and the architecture here is magnificent. It's one of my favorite spots to sit 
and enjoy life. Going on a Lisbon shopping spree is a perfectly sound way to explore the city. Whether you prefer the typical fast fashion stores or small quirky handicraft shops, it's all there. The best shopping advice we can give is to continue to get lost. The most interesting shops are usually spread out with oftentimes odd locations. In terms of shopping here in Lisbon, you have to go to one of the flea markets. There are several different, this is definitely our favorite market. Feira da... Feira da Lava. <laughs> it is here every Tuesday and every Sunday. This is the flea market in Belém, and this happens every first Sunday in a month. Pay attention to the prices here though, more than at the other markets, because they're very used to tourists here. You also have Anjo 70 Art and Flea Market every weekend. And don't miss LX Market on Sundays. In the wonderful neighborhood of Principial, you have a cute farmer's market every Saturday that we love to visit. We always find saliva-inducing delicacies, whether it's chili, cheese, and well, pottery. I think we should get one. Okay. Embaixada is an old palace filled with Portuguese concept stores. Mutual for them all is the strong focus on design and quality. This is one of our favorite places to come and show Portuguese handcraft. The building here is absolutely beautiful and it's like a concept store so they have so many different good stuff here. I think me and Amelia have been to every kiosk there is here in Lisbon and we simply just love sitting here so much and especially here at the viewpoint of Sao Pedro Alcantara. Lisbon has so many beautiful viewpoints that you automatically will stumble upon many of them. But consider bookmarking these ones. It's always amazing to marvel at the city from the top of Park Eduardo. It is usually not this windy, guys. <laughs> or climb to the top of Lisbon at the magnificent Castelo Sao Jorge. But the viewpoints are not only for viewing, they are also for hanging out. We are at the viewpoint O Miradouro in Graça. This is where you get probably the best view of Lisbon. This is the Santa Catarina Miradouro. We are close to everything. Several rooftops, actual rooftops right around the corner along with hangouts. You have to bring a bottle from one of the supermarkets and then hang out here, enjoying all the nice things that it offers. So obviously Lisbon isn't a hidden gem anymore, but the city still has a few hidden gems. Here are five. Welcome to Cemeterio do Praceres. A hidden gem of Lisbon. This is a really beautiful cemetery located very close to the center of Lisbon. In and, Camp Duric. And it's such a beautiful thing to walk here and enjoy all the beautiful what do you call these? Mussoleums. Mussoleums. Yeah. So it's a stunning gesture to the dead and also a reminder that death is imminent. Most people that visit Lisbon, they would go to Time Out Market, but in our opinion, it's actually not the best one. A hidden gem is the market of Cam Duric, much more local, much better value for money and I think it's a delicious market. You also have a Shuda Botanical Garden which is right next to our old home close to Belém. This is a garden that very few people are aware of but a beautiful place to just get lost, maybe have a bottle of wine. If you don't want to leave the center of the city and you still want somewhat of a secret garden, you can go and visit Chardim de Turel and it's stunning. It offers amazing views and some summers they actually open up the fountain for people to swim in. The last hidden gym would be a whole neighborhood. It's the neighborhood of Mavilla. Mavilla. This is a really nice creative hub where you find artists and furniture designers, breweries. breweries. It's kind of a creative artsy fancy upcoming hub of Lisbon yeah. and there is this kind of quirky atmosphere out there. Lisbon is a fountain of epicness. It's the Tinder date that will always lead to something more. When we came here the first time in 2017, we were instantly ready to get married and a year later we moved in together. Yes, we're still talking about Lisbon. Maybe you will feel the same way. No matter what, Lisbon will steal a piece of your heart. Now it's time to eat. So feel free to join us for an epic food tour where we visit the best restaurants in Lisbon.